forging ahead amidst a pandemic. The year 2020 is marked by the COVID-19 crisis. Against this backdrop, we would like to share with you the stories of a few textile and garment industry leaders who have remained agile and resilient, exploring new opportunities or even contributing to the community. Featuring Dr. Ingo Malman with host Nicole Kohlers. Welcome to ITMA Live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another ITMA Live session, Forging Ahead Amidst a Pandemic. It's my pleasure to introduce our guest today, Dr. Ingo Malman from Olekin Nonwoven, one of the leading solution providers of a wide range of flexible, high-performance non-woven technologies. With his vast years of experience and now Vice President of Sales and Marketing, we have Dr. Ingo Malman. Ingo, thank you for joining us. Hello, Nicole. Thank you for this nice introduction. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. So, Olekin Nonwoven is known for man-made fiber, filament spinning systems, texturing machines, and so on and so on. Would you please briefly uh, tell us more about Olekin Nonwoven and the secrets behind its success? Yes, as you correctly mentioned, Olekin Nonwoven is part of the big Olekin group, which is headquartered in Switzerland. And Olekin Man-Made Fiber is one of the two segments of the Olekin group. The Erlikon man-made fiber segment is headquartered in Remscheid in Germany. And we, Erlikon non-woven, are part of this Erlikon man-made fiber segment. So we, as Erlikon non-woven, are located in Neumünster. Neumünster is close to Hamburg in the northern part of Germany. And we are co-located with Erlikon Neumark, our sister company in the, in the segment of man-made fibers. We are focusing as Erlikon non-woven, as the name says, on the non-woven technologies, and we are supplying to the market all kinds of non-woven technologies um, to provide to our customers the most flexible and most suitable solutions to pr produce their dedicated customized products. At Erlikon, man-made fibers, we do have about 3,000 employees. About half of the employees are located in Asia, in China, and one half is located in Europe, mostly in Remscheid, and about 500 people are working at the site in Neumünster, where we are co-located as well. Erlikon Nonwoven has a second site in, in Italy, so we are having two sites uh, where we are focusing on the Nonwoven technologies. At Erlikon Nonwoven, we do have about yeah, 15 employees in Germany, and about 25 to 30 employees, we are rising up a little bit uh, in Italy. So about 40 employees only focusing on the non-woven technologies. But of course, we take the resources of the early con man-made fiber groups, the uh, manufacturing and engineering capabilities into our account as well. It sounds like you're pretty famous in Germany and making your way all, through, all throughout Europe. That's exciting. I do have to ask you that the pandemic has um, presented quite a few challenges. How has Orlikin been coping with these challenges? Have you had to make any adjustments? Yes, indeed. Um, you can imagine in the beginning of, of the pandemic, begin of this year, actually, um, the uh, requests in all the uh, fields went down dramatically. But in non-woven, we received a massive increase in, uh, in, in requests, especially you can imagine for the Melblom plants we are supplying. And this drived us, dr has driven us to the uh, decision to, uh, yeah, to, to make a strategic change within our internal structures. So we, at, in February, we decided to, for example, to pre-manufacture a number of Melblom lines just to be able to supply to the market on short notice these Melblon equipment. Yeah? So our target was to provide a Melblon line fully equipped within four months, which was able. So after four weeks, after six weeks adjustment, we were able to supply to the market these kind of high 
technology, high-end technology within this short time frame, which is quite unusual. You have to imagine sometimes you normally we do need about nine to 12 months to manufacture such a line. So, and now we've been able to, to supply to our customers within four months and then installation of course adds on. But then in March, we received hundreds of requests and now our backlog is filled up until the end of 2021. So unfortunately, I have to admit, we cannot supply any more within four months. Yeah. So luckily for us, but unfortunately for the customer, we are, st we are back in the same situation to have yeah, at, uh, a delivery time of for this standard equipment, I have to say, of 12 to even longer time, 12 months to more. So, but of course, these changes were, were performed in all our uh, departments from sales to purchasing to manufacturing engineering so we changed all our internal structures all our internal processes to cope with this massive increase of requests yeah and luckily our our customers valued this and we, we luckily we were able to sell a lot of these equipment all over the world so not only china not only europe not only north america basically all over the world so a lot of that, changes. That a lot of changes, absolutely. But you were able to be flexible and efficient with the short amount of time that was requested. I would say that's a positive outcome. Um, that's wonderful to hear. Uh, can you share any lessons maybe or uh, maybe any kind of um, situations where you've been able to uh, share the, with the community or help the community in any way? The word of magic is standardization, and this is nothing new to the industry, but you have to find and decide on a manage management base together with a customer base, a standard which fits to, let's say, 80% of the base you want to serve in this moment, and then be able to quickly transform this standard into, into, all, these, uh, into all these fields of yeah, fulfillment. Yeah? So... It's not only on the paper, it needs to be designed, it needs to be manufactured. And once you have the standard, you are able to, yeah, to provide on a quick base. So of course, the purchasing of some parts could not be accelerated that much. So even now we are supplying plants to customers and we cannot provide all the equipment from our sub suppliers, for example, within this time frame, So we need to be even flexible in the installation. And even after commissioning such a line, we, are, we need to implement, re-implement equipment, which comes later. All this, a lot of flexibility beside a lot of standardization. So this has to be a good mixture. And yeah, with a good team in the back of, uh, of us, we were able to manage this and it's, it's not easy. But it's yeah, it's a kind of positive stress we have at the moment. Yeah, so it's really, yeah, it's it's really fun as well. So it's it's really nice to have this opportunity as a let's say normal manufacturing um, equipment manufacturer to help the world supplying these crucial equipment to to customers to produce Melblown equipment to produce Melblown for face masks, which are required everywhere. Yeah. So it's our, our mission to help the world to ensure these supply chains. And yeah, we are valued this. Yeah. It's wonderful to hear you say fun when you're talking about this because it, it can be very overwhelming in this situation, but you've been able to be very positive about this. So, you know, we're, we're speaking like this online. What about the impact of digitalization on the textile industry? Uh, many companies have been forced to advance their technological uh, online presence. What is your uh, view on this? Do you think this trend is here to stay? So for me personally, and I think for many of my colleagues and uh, yeah, for the, many of the customers as well, the world of 
Equipment Sales and Negotiation changed totally in a digital world. Just imagine my last business trip has been in February this year, and we've been selling a lot of lines. This would, not, would never have been like this in the past. Yeah, so now everyone is accepting online negotiation, Zoom meetings, name it, Teams meetings, Skype meetings. So video meetings and telephone meetings is now a common tool, whereas it's not been like this in the past. So in the past, you are okay, you could make an online meeting as well, but it's always been the second choice. Now it's vice versa. It's the first choice to have a quick meeting online. And then if there is the possibility, we have to say at the moment still, then we have a face-to-face -face meeting. And I think this will stay in the, in the future as well. So we will, we will be able to maybe save three or five business trips in the future, which is nice for the, for the environment, which is nice in terms of saving CO carbon footprint, and uh, which is actually nice for my family and not only my family, a lot of families are missing their, <laughs> their fathers or mothers uh, if they are always on business trips. So it's, it's a completely change. And I hope we can, we can keep a little bit of this uh, for, the, for the future kind of cooperation, let's say. Yeah? So it's, it's, a new, um, it's, uh, it's a new importance of these online tools. And uh, we all have seen and we all have faced a lot of uh, yeah, lacks of technology and um, the video meetings doesn't work pretty much uh, ev everywhere, wherever you connect to. But most of the time it worked out fine. And uh, yeah, beside this, of course, digitization in the, let's say, online meeting, digitization in the, in, in the, in the plant performance, let's say in the technology, it's always been a key factor uh, in our technology. So our technology is equipped with a, uh, let's say an automatic operator system. We call it FAUS, fully automatic system, um, which is a virtual operator already. So, and this is the bridge to implement the technology into an industry for zero environment. So, and we do at Earlycorn have the digital hub colleagues, which are only looking in, digital software solutions for customers. So, and this is all getting together. And now as we are all needed to accept the digital way of working, I think we have the chance to even embrace with the technology, this digital mindset a little bit more, which is at, at the end, a big advantage for all of us. It's, uh, it's good to, to hear that you've been able to uh use your resources and, and uh, embrace this digital digitalization. Uh, but that being said, it, it, like you said before, it, is, it was before the, the, the idea to meet with people in person and you as a trade show participant, a regular trade show participant, uh, how do you think that this is going to impact the way customers source? Do you think that trade shows will continue to play an important role on sales and marketing? That's a good question indeed, but I'm convinced that we will, we will still go on trade shows and there will be potentially be more, more importance on trade shows like this, because I, I uh, want to tell you one point. Within this time, within this period, the past six, seven months, we, we learned to have multiple meetings, even from our offices all over the world. So I, I just, I had some days having four meetings on four different continents on one day. So with four different customers. So it was not, even, not, not easy every, all the time, but it's been working. And it's quite similar to being at a show. Yeah. So, and now combining these, so we learned to, to implement these kind of working into our daily business. And now I think we can focus this kind of work on a trade show as well. So coming back together on a trade show and having the important kickoff meetings on a trade show to network and to get together. 
and then we don't need to travel all over the world to uh, to go in into detailed meetings again so maybe we can even have as i said save three of the five meetings face to face meetings in the future one of the leftover meetings will still be at the fair i think well, I think it is all of our hopes that uh, we will soon be able to indeed meet in person. There's nothing like meeting someone face to face. Uh, but yes, and we will continue to communicate online. And I think that you have just answered my the first question about the sec one of the secrets behind Orlikin's success is being flexible and positive and continuing on uh, focused. And I'm very happy to hear that you have quite a busy next few months ahead of you. So thank you so much for sharing all this, all of this with us and, and your time. Uh, Dr. Ingo Malman, ladies and gentlemen. Ingo, thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of another ITMA Live session, Forging Ahead Amidst the Pandemic. If you haven't already, Please subscribe to our ITMA channel on YouTube and stay tuned for our next episode with our special guest, Mr. Anil Rajvanshi from Reliance Industries. Until then, stay positive.